She's trying to get her her to tilt it down. She's trying to get her um microphone. I mean her camera working. Oh, she's in the far away, Bridget. Okay. Oh, she on there now? I don't know. I see something right there. That's us. Oh, that's us. Yeah. Oh, Bridget's down here. Oh, Bridget right there. Well, since the meeting, uh, the workshop meeting is open, we always uh, go with our code enforcement officer, Dave. Mike, do you have anything for Dave? I've seen Dave all week. All right. Last week, this week, I've seen him up there. Okay. Carrie? Um, 1609 Bridge, did, did we do anything with that door that was kicked open? I told you I'm about it. Okay. Um, the garbage at Crutz, this has been all summer. What are we going to do? We've got rats coming out of there. It's ridiculous. You want to send a back to over to get them out there? Sure. We could do that in building. Yeah. We'll we'll the but it's well. ridiculous. We're looking at winter coming up and all those rats yeah, are going to be going in. in. So, you know. I told him that he will see the kill. Yeah, I know. Um, but. The tree on the water still on the corner of Bob Burton and Sheridan. This has been used. Oh, so it's, the, the right it's not the King Lights wires. It is right. legal wires. And so they're not going to come out and bother with it. It's the homeowner whose tree is coming out over and resting on the wires. Right. Right. It was up there. But they did nothing for that. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're not going to do nothing. Go around and look at all the poles hanging. Oh, and the pole's been replaced with resin ain't doing anything about it. That's, that's, that, that's, I don't like that situation. No, because it wouldn't be happening. There has to be a dozen. It wouldn't be happening in Fox Chapel. It wouldn't be happening in Upper St. Clair. Why is it allowed to go on here? But you might have to get it. There's going to be at least a dozen of them. And then the weeds right. on the park fence. More? Coming over. There yeah. That's like an ongoing issue. Yeah, I just want you to be delinked with uh, trash bills and his name's in there. So I don't know if he walked away from the place. Which guy? One of those uh, property ones. The two properties? There's yeah. two different ones. There's a guy that owned the one that redid the whole the back property. He redid it, and there's somebody from Florida running. And then there's um, the front property. Those people are the same people that have been there forever. Yeah, yeah. He just came up on the building on the uh, mm -hmm. His dog just gave me a handful of uh, stack that thick of them. But the only put what? Trash. Okay. And his name was in there. He just might not be paying his bill, but he's still there. You know, whoever owns the firm. Yeah. Maybe they're running, I don't know. Um, I guess that's all for you. <laughs> Mike, do you have anything for Dave? Nothing for me. No, no, no. I'm just going to here at 14 hours. Yeah. I don't know what the hell we're doing now. I don't know. Okay. Um, I don't care. The guy up on Grandview, um, Terrence Vasco, or Visco maybe, okay, he has an apartment building where the tenants are buying cars by County Airport, bringing them in, parking them on the sidewalk, and they're working on the cars and selling the cars and taking up all the neighborhood parking. They're all out of state plates on the cars. What's that? He has a couple of them. Um, it's, it's close to 1711, but I'm not sure the exact address. But if between Isaac and you, you know, the car shouldn't be there. And also the guy on Grand with the trucks. He's still got those trucks parked on that property. Yeah. We don't have none of those properties. But are the trucks legally, they're not supposed to be in? Well, they're not on the street. And if they're registered and everything. Are they are they registered? Or as I know, because he uses them every day. But if we don't have an owner of that lot. So anybody can just pick a lot and just park their cars there and basically. They get the same thing I'm sure. One guy has five lexuses and a jack out the sidewalk. He needs a jack out the sidewalk but he's People are complaining they don't have I mean, it's a residential area. He's, you know, he's running a business out of his home. It's a residential area. So what do we do? 
Because, I mean, these poor people are probably complaining. I mean, I see their point. It's not fair. Tara, I think you ought to address that with the solicitor in the All right. Okay. okay. I'm done. Jerome, right. you done with Dave? Yeah. Lisa, do you have anything for Dave? Um, Dave, I don't know if you got my last email. I know you, you said, yeah. you, but did you get the one I got sent after that? Okay, yeah, I did get a hold of him. Been working with him for 15 years. Mm -hmm. He's a nice person. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Thanks. Vicki, do you have anything for our code enforcement officer? Uh, no. No? Bridget, are you on? Yes. Bridget's yes. on. Okay. Do you have anything for our code enforcement officer? No, I have nothing for Dave. Thank you. Dave, do you have anything to report to council on anything? Uh, Any outstanding issues? Two weeks ago, we met with uh, U.S. Steel again, and that was just to uh, discuss the uh, floodplain at the mill, which uh, flood engineering is handling. So everything will go, everything will go through. Uh, they're going to submit everything to Glenn, uh, and that's just making sure that you know. Nothing that they're putting in there is going to get flooded out. And if we have the late 2020 is going, we might have a winter year flood. So. Yeah, I have a question. Have we come to an understanding, or is it pretty much a blanketed agreement that that's not a temporary structure? That a 500 foot building with enough steel in it to build a bridge from here to Rankin doesn't constitute temporary structure? They are tearing that down as soon as they start construction on the mill, so that is considered to them a temporary structure. But what do we consider it? I mean, he, there's enough steel in that building for us to build a house or two or three for all these people here to live in, and it, the wind would not prevail against it. So I'm asking, what do we consider it? And then we need to tell U.S. Steel this is not temporary, and then we have permit fees that they have to kick for that, right? I'm sorry, I'm trying to talk so she can hear me. I hate it. No, it's. I mean, it, it, I mean who makes the designation? If they're going to tear it down, then it's going to be a temporary structure. Is there a That's time the period designation? For that? Do it have to be a time period for that? They're, they're going to tear that down as soon as they start with production on the uh, planet itself. So, my question is we don't get fees for a quasi stable. Temporary structure. I mean, this building could be temporary if we decide to tear it down next week. So I'm saying, what do? What's the distinction that we make for them to to be able to say, hey, this is not temporary, or is it a semi-permanent structure? Yeah, it's Which, temporary. They, they're going to get rid of it. That's the you know the understanding that we had at the meetings. We sat here with them. Of you were at that meeting, and they discussed it. And it's a temporary structure. That's just a house things until they start construction. And so because even though they constructed it, they don't owe us permit fees. For Given it. the fact that we're going to receive the size of the building permit fee when the construction begins, we thought it was uh, it made sense to let them proceed with that temporary structure. It has a canvas side to it. Uh, it's coming down, as Dave said, we thought uh, the large the building permit fee would more than cover the uh, small portion of the building fee we would get from the that's why we did it. We give a multi-billion dollar organization like the United States still a chance at sliding on money that in an impoverished neighborhood that we can't even afford to fix our bridges on. And we can say to them, this is a temporary structure and you don't owe us a dime, even though you pollute our air and make things, you know what I mean, hard. In other ways, we don't have, we don't ask them to pay us for it, constructing something on our land. I hope anything that I construct here would be considered a temporary structure. When we calculate the building permits, we will roll some numbers in to, to accommodate the temporary structure. That will satisfy you. Absolutely, because we need money. Thank you, sir. That's all I have. Dave, are you leaving or are you staying around? I'm not Okay, because instead of me having the, you, We'll go under the right. Uh, if you have any questions that they want to address to you, thank you. 
Okay, next is our code engineer. Okay, um, I'll try to be fast here. Uh, the first item, combined soil overflow control implementation, it hasn't changed since last month, or in fact, for the last six months. Alcasan trunk soar takeover, again, that hasn't changed. Commonwealth Financing Authority, that's the grant for uh, the Britain Avenue playground, which is going to go out to bid next week. So we have, yeah, the basketball court and the... You guys are getting into the cold weather. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But one, one of the things, like I said, uh, is, is the, uh, the, the, the equipment you need really, uh, everybody's having a hard time picking up stuff right now. So but I, hopefully within the next month or six weeks, that ought to be done. It's not a very big project. Uh, Most of it's already there with the sprinter. We're just going to get a frog head that spins around and, uh, you know, yeah, for the yeah, additional, yeah. exactly. And then the one basketball hoop up the one. Okay. All right, CD45 demolition. Um, that was Minifield. I think they start. Did they start yet, though? No, not yet. Okay. But we're going to start. Uh, that, that's CD45. It's kind of hard to believe this is already 46, but we're still working from last year's demolition due to the fact that the county held everything up. Uh, CD47, the pre applications were uh, submitted. Street reconstruction, demolition, and the uh, repair of the Hawkins Avenue Bridge, the expansion dams, the CITF funding, uh, Hawkins Avenue paving, and, that, and all that's going to be held off to the uh, or held off to the uh, water line. As Wilkinsburg Penn Joint has proposed water line from Fourth Street to the bridge, so um, we'll wait for them to finish the project. The BPW roof that um, will have to be addressed before winter. So we just have to figure out um, the funding and everything on that project. The PennDOT Intermodal Transportation Grant is uh, basically sidewalks and other items around the uh, Hawkins Act Ajax Recreation Site. Uh, Hawkins Avenue, or Hawkins Action Ajax Recreation Site. We made with, with Dave Briston, and we have pretty much all the equipment uh, picked out and everything. Uh, we have the, some of the drawings done, but again, we're waiting for the county for signed documents to proceed with that. Hawkins Bridge over 6th Street. I kind of talked about that. That was submitted for the uh, CD47 uh, pre-applications. And again, those are the expansion dams and the hammerhead that holds up the bridge. Uh, there's some repair work that needs to be done on that. Uh, CD funds demolition 708 Penn Street. Uh, that, I don't know where it's at. That's, again, that's in the county's hands right now, what they're going to do with that. And last, the U.S. still proposed new development. We kind of talked about that before. And uh, everything's still in the planning stage, and that's where we're at. Joe, one other thing to put on your list is the border downstairs has uh, been finished. So we're in the process of doing something to take a look at that. Okay. I'll, I'll stop down. Take a look and we'll see what we can come up with. Yeah. Joe, it's a good time to address it now before it gets cold. Yeah. yeah. Sir. Joe, is there any uh, word on a Duker's Hollow Bridge? Any update on that? I, I assume that it's going to be coming down pretty soon within the, the next couple of months. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, that's the only thing you know, I, I don't see. They, they didn't put any, start putting any signs up or anything. No. Yeah. 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 They're just clear out the deep. I guess they relocated the uh, electric lines and everything that was underneath. But that was another problem they had. They had electric yeah, lines that were going to drop it. So I would assume that it's going to happen pretty soon. Maybe I, I'd be safe to say before the beginning of the year. Well, I think the time frame was supposed to be October of, uh, of, this, of this year. year. Yeah. yeah. They were going to shut it down and they were going to implode it around blow. October. Yeah. yeah. Another thing, Joe, Bill Avenue here. It's been uh, almost two years now that they were supposed to come back and, and, and pave it from where they did about a dozen openings from uh, Jones Avenue. From Jones to uh, uh, Corona. Yeah, okay. That, I talked to Jesse Colby, the lady that does the uh, uh, right away, with all the permits and everything, and they're aware of that. It's just that they have to put that in their system to get, re to get the uh, asphalt half. One third of the road needs to be repaved. Uh, and, and that's what they, they're going to do, is just a matter of uh, getting it done. And I told them we were nice enough last year not to complain too much, but we need it done before the end of this year, before the weather turns. Yeah, because, I mean, it's been, you know, over 12 so months. Just, yes, yes. And every time it's been going on. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mike, do you have anything for uh, 
Yeah. They've had the same problem up there on Britain with they cut out squares for going towards East Pittsburgh. And that's not, you see that? They fixed mine. Yeah, yeah they fixed your point. <laughs> but uh, up towards, from Britain, uh, where Ravine goes up to East Pittsburgh, and that, there's some squares there that they didn't. They didn't repay the work. Plus, I think the top of Britain, somebody said, is sinking down. Yeah, what are you, what are you talking about, Mike, up at the... Gordon, if you're going from uh, Ravine and Britain, you know what okay. I'm talking about? Going up towards East Pittsburgh. They cut out uh, some squares, about five squares. And then there's some little dips in there. They haven't, you know, they haven't paved the road. And that was the gas company or water company that did that? Uh, blue was a blue-white truck, so I, I rode by, I don't know. I'd have to take a look I at that. See, see. Yeah, I didn't see the writing. I'm pretty sure it was water company, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I can ride up that way. You can I'll look. take a look. Yeah. I'll take a look first. But they're the same square as they cut all the way up Britain. It was up Britain before. Okay. There's one cut out on the middle, too. We got water going for this. Yeah. I guess they're going to cut them all on the phase at one time. Right. No, normally, if it's a water company, they're pretty good with their repairs. But uh, again, I guess I would just have to see what it is and uh, bring it to their attention that this needs to be done before winter. Did you bring up the problem on briefing the uh, subsidence? Okay, yeah. uh, that was a, that's another area on Ridge where the road is actually starting to move. Which part of it? Uh, the S Near or? In, in the, the S curve. Oh, that was the that part where they have. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, I, I talked to uh, Public Works, we were up there looking at that. And what we're gonna end up doing is, I'm gonna get a price. What we, all we can do is pave half the road for about 200 feet. Try to raise it up and put a wedge curb in it so the water now doesn't run down and go down between the wedge curb or the concrete curb and the uh, pavement. This way it'll run down to the catch basin. Hopefully we can save it for a while. Fortunately, it hasn't been raining that much. We come next spring, we might have an issue there if we don't try to stop the water. Well, further, further down on Ridge, where that, I mean, on the brand new, it's still dripping off that hillside. It's like, yeah, that's what, that's coming out of the mine or something. It's, yeah, it's coming out of somewhere, but it's not going into the, to the drain. Well, I mean, it's that's just one of the things. That, come winter, it's just, yeah. you know. Charlie, did, did the guys try to come up here and dig behind the curve to keep the water from coming on the road? Okay. Right. That, that, that'll kind of take care of that problem. It's just puddled there all the time. I, just I, I, I just came that way and I didn't notice yeah. it. And like I said, this year, lately it hasn't been that bad because it hasn't been raining a lot. Yeah. Okay. You have anything else, Mike? Derek? Mike, you have anything for Jeff? You think for bids? You said? I think they would send that to Paul. What's that, Mike? Are we waiting for bids for the playground to start? Okay, the playground, actually what we're doing, Mike, is there's the, some of the funding comes from the county and we have to wait for, them for the sign contract before we put anything out. Jerome? No, Mr. Jerome. Lisa? No, sir. Vicki, do you have anything for our borough engineer? Bridget, do you? Hi, Bridget. Do you, do you have anything for our borough engineer? No, I do not. I do. Okay. Thank you. For the audience out there, our borough engineer has to leave to attend another meeting. Uh, does anybody have any questions for our borough engineer? Yes. Sir, you in the middle. State your name and uh, your address, please. My name is Raymond Webb. I live at 1124 Kirkpatrick Avenue. I have, I don't know if it's two or three lots mm -hmm. beside me. They were supposed to have cut grass, mm -hmm. but all they did was they just did the sidewalk and tore the sidewalk off to the right of my car. Now there's a tree that is leaning over onto my property that it's going to fall. I lost some insurance because of that. I have taken it on myself. I've been doing it over the years, cutting down 
that lot. And I came in August to get my parking. I have not, I understood when they told me in March that it was COVID. And when I go down the curb to get off, it's at a slant I slide every time. They told me that they would fix it. When it rains, I slide. I can't get onto the VA vans. It's bad. Now, are y'all going? I would like to do something with the lot beside me because I got the tree has to come down and I have to level that out so I can get on the VA van to get to my appointments. Mr. Way, what's your address again? 1124. I'm on Kirkpatrick Avenue, corner of Kirkpatrick and Commons. I'll send somebody out to take a look at that tree and that lot to see if you can help out. I did the lot beside me. I, I got that cut down. I need the tree. I wouldn't mind. I would need to get the lot because for y'all to level it up for me to get off, it's going to cost some money because I'm slot. And I'm going to tell you, it's a matter of time before I fall in my chair. Well, we're going to send the street department, our public works department out there, take a look at the tree and also the property. But do you know who owns the property next door to you? No. It's been empty since I've been here for over 10 years. And I constantly keep cutting. We, we, we do have a program in a borough that's called the Vacant Property Program. You could apply to acquire that property through Allegheny County. All you have to do is come down and fill up, get an application, fill out the paperwork. You'll be presented to council. Council always approves any time that somebody wants to acquire a property, and then you can incorporate that property into your property if it's adjacent to it. Yes. That's yes. something for you to consider. I can do that tomorrow. Are there, in, are there houses on the property? No. It's, no. Just it's vacant house. land. It's vacant land. Right. I don't, like I said, I don't know if it's two or three lots, but I got 20 feet, at least 20 feet cut down so I don't have all these rodents and everything coming into my house. Mr. Webb, that's not a, uh, a, I'm glad our borough engineer is hearing that, but that falls more under public work okay. department. So maybe we could move on and you could, if you have any additional, you could say it at the public comment period, okay? Sure, thank you. Anybody else for, uh, uh, yes? Uh, Kathleen Demanchek, 217 Parkland Drive. I don't know if this is you, Joe, but there is a sewer on Parkland Drive. It's between 221 and 223 Parkland Drive. It's not a sewer like the rest of them in General Reddit Park. It's just a flat grate on the grate that very, has very wide openings on the grate. And it fills up with stones constantly, and then the water doesn't can't drain, and the water just goes down the streets and it's going down people's driveways. But, but I can look, I can take a look at that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Since there's nobody else that wants anything, Joe. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good stay well. Hi, Joe. Bye. See you in the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we're going to move along to our uh, public works foreman here. Charlie? Mike, do you have anything for Charlie? I haven't talked to Charlie this morning, yesterday morning, Friday morning, Saturday. <laughs> I talked to Charlie all morning. He just liked us. All right. Thank you. Terry? I already talked to Charlie. Right. Michael? I have nothing for Charlie. Grump? I have nothing for Charlie. Talk to him all. Lisa? I appreciate Charlie, but I do have a couple of things and maybe we have to put our heads together on this, so that's why I'm going to bring it up for everyone. There have been uh, a couple of uh, residents that have called me and stated that, especially one she called yesterday, that rats are running from an abandoned house into hers. What's the address? Um, it's on Hawkins Avenue. Actually, um, 
email Doug about it, and he said he'll pass it on. But that's not the issue. There's a, been a couple of people who've said, you know, I live next to an abandoned house, it's really overgrown, and we're seeing rodents and things. And I know we are overwhelmed with abandoned houses. I drove up Sedan Avenue the other day, and you, there's like a whole row of a house I can't even see. But can we pay a little extra attention to the houses that sit next to people who inhabit houses? So, for example, and I know that's asking a lot, Charlie, because I understand. I mean, it's we, we don't live go in, on private property. We live on the mountain. I, I understand that, but what's happening is there are rats, and we're going to have a rat problem. And we have a lot of feral cats that seem to be taking care of the rats, but we're going to have a major issue. And then I noticed this lady said that people are throwing garbage, so now that's drawing rats. So I'm just saying, I don't know we what you can do if you can cut, I don't know if it's We have too some much. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, and you'll get that information. I didn't want to belabor you yeah. here on that. But I'm just saying, thinking, moving forward and trying to sort of support the people who are actually staying here, um, if we could maybe try to cut around. Um, I know it's asking a lot, and it's, but it's just, I don't want people to move out because we're saying I live next to an abandoned house and there's rats pouring out of it or raccoons or whatever. You know, Mr. Evans, I talked to him. Um, he talked about you know, the- what, all I have to do is call him. Have a guy right, I called Dave. I called Dave myself, yeah. and he did come and bait, and it was another Austin Hawkins. But I was just saying, this is symptomatic of a bigger problem, that you were not gonna be able to battle back if we don't try to maybe cut some of the shrubbery down. I mean, I hope the winter helps us with that. But um, I'm just asking. I mean, I know it's a lot, I'm just asking. I know it's not, you know, it's private property, but here again, people who live next door are staying and they're paying taxes, and I, I wouldn't want them to leave because they're just like, I can't handle it. Vicki, do you have anything for Charlie? Um, it's not necessarily for Charlie, but to follow up on, you know, I'm not sure whose who's responsibility it is, but um, in addition to the rats and the cats, we have groundhogs that, um, honestly, I'm not sure if they're rapid. They're very slow. They'll sit in the middle of the street. They walk in circles. We have children around, so if you can add that to the list of we need some animal control on, on groundhogs. We're out. We're out, Vicki. Uh, we're looking at options, lease permits, etc. Uh, just to 
Talk to the United States still. We're <laughs> doing that also. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you have anything for our chief of police, Mike? Whoa, 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 boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told Butler about the car. That guy got he's fixing up cars. He got the one's been tagged. It's been sitting there for a week now. A truck. Uh, we got like four or five. Uh, lunch. Sheridan by that apartment building. They're parked in the yellow, you know, the yellow, yellow curve. Some of them were parked right next to the fire engine. So I mean, we want to, I don't know, want to look into that. You know, I mean, one guy, he got so many cars there. Yeah, the rent car doesn't have a plate either. They're, what's that? The rent car doesn't have a plate on I know. And there, yeah, there's a one with no plate. <laughs> Couple of neighbors say, "Hey, we're well, getting tired of not being able to park. I got park. I live here. I got to park a block and a half, two blocks away. So I don't even want to talk to him. Or, Absolutely. You know, I mean, he got a jack sitting out there on the sidewalk. The kids play with it. It's one of the big, big jacks. So I don't know. So put it away. Don't leave it on the sidewalk. Somebody trip on it. Other than that, I'm glad you did your uh, saturation. Uh, you got some stuff." That's good. I see a lot of guys out of control. I appreciate that. We don't want the uh, malingering. Vince is doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you for getting the Um That's in my book. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you weren't here when I was talking today, but around the 1700 block of Brandy, okay, there's a lot of cars that are being worked on. There are a lot of out-of-state plates. Um, the rumor is that they're buying them out by the airport, bringing them in, working on them, and then flipping them. So can we do anything to get rid of them? Or We can look them? into them. I mean, if we run the plate and everything's legal, yeah, that's it's, it's very hard to deal with when it's legal. But if it's not legal, yes, we can. Okay, and then I don't know. I'll get that last All right. Carol, <laughs> was that the issue you wanted to talk yeah. about? Yeah. Well, no, that was the, the guy at the, um, the guy in Grandview, he's running a business out of his home. He has two trucks that he's parked on the lot beside us, the home he's renting. Now, it's not, the lot is not owned by the people he's renting from, and we can't find the ownership of the, the lot. So what could we do to stop it? Because basically the neighbors are tired of it. Um, well, a home business is something you have to get zoning approval for. So. Right, so it's zone residential. So. so you can, there are home occupations uh, that you can you can have and work out of your house, but you have to get zoning approval for. Them. Like normally, it's things like yeah, like hair cutting. Or yeah, or, or hair somebody hair. that has a business and they just want to have to do office work. Yeah, but this money. man has two trucks that he's supposedly using, which I'm not sure. Does he move those trucks? Yes. Okay, so he has people coming in, moving the truck, using the trucks, pulling them back. I mean, it, it's that would be a, a zoning issue. And we talk to the Dave about that. So could they be towed off this property even though we don't know who the owners of the property are? And you not, see not if there's not a specific violation. I mean, if, if it's a zoning issue, they could be cited for like, running a, an unapproved home a business or a home business, whatever you want to call it. But towing, towing the vehicles off of the lot. Because he was part of the street. Let's put it this way. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that until I took some zoning action. Okay. Let's put it that way. All right. I mean, I think it, you could get the, the, the vehicles off the lot. You just can't walk them off the lot. Right. Here, I'm, I'm sure he hasn't applied for a, a home occupation. All right. The other person you were talking about that has the cars that's flipping them, mm -hmm. that's a, where he is, it's not zone commercial. No, it's not. That would be a zone violation. Yeah, also. yeah. Is Dave in here? Is he hearing this? Dave, are you in there? Are you hearing these comments? Pardon me? 
catching up on things I didn't get done with. Oh, well, okay. But I mean, uh, there's uh, some concerns. To, uh, the solicitor said we could. To, to, it sounds like people are running businesses out of a residential uh, zone <laughs> area. And, you know, the question is that, that they should apply to the zoning hearing board to, you know, to get approval for that, if, if that's what they're doing. The fellow with the box trucks that parks his trucks on a vacant lot that he owns. Uh, 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 Terry assumes that he's running a, a home business out of there. I'm sure he hasn't applied for a home occupation. So that's one way of pursuing this. Right. Same thing with the other fellow that's. Um, uh, yes, I did some work on it and, and so on and so forth and initialized it. But they added that letter to make it more professional sounding and informative to the residents and what was expected of the residents. Are we getting that at this point? It's hard to tell yet if we're getting uh, what we're asking for in that matter. Uh, and that's for all of us to be more responsible as residents of the community, basically. And do your part. Do what's required of you as a homeowner, as a property owner, even as a renter. You don't have to own the property that you live in to keep it clean. Okay. Keep it nice and on the outside and, and follow through. Uh, that, that's basically, um, and again, the informational side of it, numbers for the tax collector's office, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's valuable information that I don't think was ever shared with the residents of this community. So I want to commend uh, Louisa's one and uh, Vicki, uh, and as well as Bridget, and uh, Nina's actually on the North Carolina Cares organization. And, I, I think they, and Edith. They, and Edith, I'm so sorry. There you go, Edith. Uh, again, and, and Edith is there as well. And they did a good job in, in supporting me uh, as far as that letter was concerned. And I thank you for that. Um, as some of the things I, I have in my information here uh, are relevant to the types of things I used to report on. And that was the numbers of times that we had calls into the county 911. Just as an example, based upon the criteria in the, in the regionalization uh, um, study, it doesn't compare with what we've actually done. We've had 768 calls in the county 911 last month out of this department. We had 41 assaults. That's double the number I've ever reported in any of these meetings. 41 assault calls. That means someone was obviously assaulted. We addressed that call. 17 thefts. Seven fraudulent claims. Fraud claims. Vandalism. 11 claim. 11 calls. Weapons. 26 calls on weapons. We addressed. Uh, drug possession. 43. 43 calls on drug possession. Uh, Drug sales, 21 calls. DUI arrest, 16. Um, well, good welfare calls, checking up on someone. Um, assist the EMS, 40, 49 times. Custody issues with that one. Presuming it, it's your yeah. children. Uh, we had we had a half a dozen calls relevant to that. Uh, assisted other police departments for just 28 times last month. PFAs, uh, you know, delivering, if you will. We had uh, 16 calls on that. Domestic situations, 39. And we had 571 traffic stops in this month of last month. These guys are not, these guys are doing what they need to be doing. I've heard all too often from people sitting on this council telling me that people are flying up and down Braddock or Bell Athens and nothing's getting done by it. People are flying through General Braddock Park and nothing's getting done by it. Or, or here or there. Or in, in Paisano is up on, uh, on, on Britain Avenue. Yeah, I've, I've went there myself and witnessed that. We haven't put a crosswalk in there yet, but we need to. We're talking children about that. More uh, uh, a product that might 
as far as what we have as a police department goes. I really couldn't be. Um, and we had a departmental meeting. Um, and in the departmental meeting, it was discussion drove into uh, sign-ups and the shifts and uh, just leaving the borough while you're on shift if you need to. And, and just general, general types of things. But you know what, if you don't forget, if you don't talk about those things occasionally, Sometimes it, you know, people have a tendency to overlook it. So we, we uh, now have all police officers uh, wearing body cameras at all times, what they're on duty. They must wear a camera. And, and of course, you must. Uh, it also things like calling off, the, you know, if you have to call off and notify the, the, the officer in charge of that particular ship. Very important. We've got some situations where in a last second type stuff. It's not good for the, the, the guys who have already been here for 16 hours. Okay, or, or, or whatever. So I just want to assure you folks in, in, in this particular municipality with the small numbers of police officers that we have, we certainly are doing our best to protect you all. We're doing our best. And that's all I can tell you. I want to thank you for that. If you have any questions about that, uh, and keep me in mind, going from my actual important numbers of things we've done, I've been contacted by uh, several people. Uh, one, I, I received an interesting call. You see, on, my, on the end of my answering machine, my cell phone number's there. If you can't call me to my office, I leave my cell phone number there. Someone said to me one day, are you nuts? I said, what do you mean? My nuts. It's my responsibility for you to be able to get in touch with me. Why I'm here. Otherwise, why be here? If, you're, if your constituents can't get in touch with you, what are you doing? <coughs> really? So, again, my, you listen to my message on my answer machine. At the very end, I say, if I don't call you within 24 hours, here's my cell phone number. Well, I got a call from a guy that is exceptionally, not exceptionally proud, but he's very, very proud of his daughter went on to earn her Bachelor of Science degree and her Bachelor's degree out of Woodland Hills High School. She came out of Woodland Hills High School, grew up on Logan Bear Avenue, by the way. Okay? And he's trying to contact the school district, but I guess now I'm the guy in the middle. So I'm going to contact the school district for him because he's looking for some sort of letter, of course, a rec a recognition for her accomplishments. And, and would like home also for myself with the, the borough as well. Being proud of, of, of all of our residents. Not that we're proud of all of them. In her case, yes. And I will work with them until we make that happen. I will work with them. Um, again, uh, uh, I believe at one time, I don't know if it, uh, in, in general practice powers of Boston, but uh, someone can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but at one time, was there not an age limit? Oh, yeah. yeah, it used yeah. to be yeah. older. It used to be a senior high when it first opened back in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. They, they lost the lawsuit, so they can't do that. They can't do that. And then it became a single mother's place, I do believe, after the seniors. Yeah. Well, anyway, just just, just go talk to the company. Um, that, uh, I thought about in some of these other facilities where you have problems with mixing, mixing age mixing. It doesn't work. <laughs> But I'm sure the younger folks and the older folks, it just doesn't work all, all the time. So I don't know that they could ever be put back at it, but if they lost the lawsuit, it's, it's never going to go back there. But anyway, uh, again, I don't have much more. And, and as always, look, you all know how to get in touch with me if you need to. If you can't, you know, we can go through the website here in the borough, in the order the case might be, and uh, get in touch with me that way. But, I think we need to continue to fight the fight. That's all I can tell you. Great to be here. Thank you all for your attendance. Thank you, Mayor. Does anyone have any questions on the communications? I have questions for the mayor. Sure. Okay. Where did you get your statistics? Which statistics? That you rattled off just now. That you listed. I from Allegheny County. Okay, can you give us a copy of those? Is that the information? 
activity they should be compensated. I mean it's just it's just fair. Fair. That's all I have. Thank you. That's all you have. Okay. Again, anybody have any questions on the communications? None? With that, could I have a motion on last month's minutes, please? Make a motion at the minutes from the borough council regular meeting held eight eighteen twenty are approved this critical. Second. We have a motion by Dobernitz, second by Parker. All in favor on question minutes? Question on the motion. Pardon me? Question on the motion? Go ahead. Yeah, the, this, this summation, what happened between the mayor and I and my reasoning for what some have termed as a temper tantrum are not put, they're not registered properly. My upset was not about information. My upset was not about data. My, the reason why I was so upset was because when I asked the mayor at the previous meeting how many times he attempted to meet, did we do everything that we needed to do to secure that meeting? Meaning, 
they asked for data, did we submit the data, it was repeated over and over again that the data had been submitted. And when the whip came down and it flushed out, East Pittsburgh said they never received the data, therefore that's why the meeting was never scheduled. So my upset had nothing to do with what the data said. My upset was the fact that you came to us, elected officials, and said, we didn't get, they won't meet with us. They refused to meet with us. And yet the criteria for the meeting was never met. Asked us to vote to terminate services and then we find out the next meeting that that was not the truth. So that was the reason why I was freaked out because you just gotta come with the truth to us and then we would have just decided whether or not we were gonna go ahead and terminate services. But to sit here and say that we submitted data to East Pittsburgh and East Pittsburgh said, you never did. That's why we didn't meet with you. That was why I was upset. So I felt like I was bamboozled, hoodwinked into a vote. Ripshaw. Call it whatever, that if I would have been given the truth, then I could make a decision based off of what the truth was. That was my upset. So that has to be rewarded because that is not what I I suggest you write something up and we'll prove it. Okay. Let's not give you the truth. Then you know. I'm not addressing what you have to say for this reason. Well, the commander. East, <laughs> East Pittsburgh was not. The East Pittsburgh, okay. I did not have to ask East Pittsburgh for anything. East Pittsburgh sent a letter, and I could give you a copy, to President Fahosky saying, once you submit the data to us, we will then again agree to have a meeting. I, that was the whole reason why I was upset, because they said they submitted the data when we never did. The main reason is we terminated. Terminated East Pittsburgh because of mutual aid. We don't get aid from them. Why should we give them? No, that's the main reason why you terminated. The main yeah. reason why I agreed to terminate was if we are servicing them the way we are and we reasonably ask, can't we just meet and talk about this proposal for us to assume services and you pay us and they wouldn't meet with us? Do you know how egregious, do you know what that makes these Pittsburgh look like? It makes them look like they're obstinate and that they're unreasonable. But the truth was they weren't. They wanted to meet, they were willing to meet, but we never get, so to me, it's like, to me, based on what was given at that meeting, it was as if East Pittsburgh thumbed their nose at us. But that was not the truth. They were willing to meet if we would have submitted, they wish, we should have had a proposal package saying, hey, this is how often we service you, this is what we've done, and this is what we want to charge you for it. And we should have given that to them and then we would have discussed We didn't do any of that, but we were told at the meeting that we did. But and there's that a reason was why the proposal, Lisa, what, uh, what you're saying there, is because we didn't have a full-time police chief, we didn't have a ranking sergeant, and after they got promoted, when we made Denali our chief, and then we promoted Butler from patrol, patrolman to a sergeant, we had a police department that we were able to go to them with a, you know, put and together a police department. Not, not, a, not an acting and not a part time. You know, I, that, that, that's what happened. I hear you, but then we should have held off on the vote. We should have submitted the proposal to them and given them a chance to answer I, it with I, the data. We didn't do that, and that's not what was told to us. I believe, in hearing, I believe in what hearing what, what the audience was saying about the services that they wanted from our police department stuff. It was basically, we were putting too much time and effort in East Pittsburgh when that time and effort had been put in North Braddock and we weren't getting the mutual aid agreement from East Pittsburgh and we just were spending too much time there and council felt that, hey, let's just but I'm Just saying that may not be, that wasn't the reason why I voted yes. I, know, I, would, I, I voted yes that. because I felt like here we are, we're trying to meet with you guys, and you wouldn't meet with well, us. Because that's what was told to me. Well, well I, 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 I can basically, that wasn't the truth. I, I, I can basically, from conversations that I've had with council people, it just was the services that we were given to East Pittsburgh had nothing to do with numbers. And, and I'm on record tonight as saying 
if East Pittsburgh really wanted us, they would have been coming. Well, didn't, they, didn't they come to us? No, when they no, first, no they, they never did. Didn't they, they come to us when they first they came, lost they, their they police? Came, they, 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 oh, yeah. they, they came to us when they disbanded their police. Police right. department, yes. And yes. what did we say? And they offered us what? About 200000 No, they offered our position, us. Our position was we weren't, we had, we, we did not have a chief of police in place at that time. Oh, and oh. that uh, given the controversy that had that was occurring in Pittsburgh, we could make that time. Okay, so I don't want to belabor this point because we're actually really talking about minutes. But the truth of the matter is, is that if they came to us then, without us asking, had we submitted that data that they requested, they would have come to us again and had the meeting, and we probably may have gotten services and been paying even up to the point of the regionalization. We don't know yeah. because what was told that that got my vote was they won't meet with us. And that was yes. a lie. Yes. Just a little question. Okay. Yes. Police Pittsburgh have pulled their own information and seen sure. that the Times North product was sure. in their borough. Sure. They did. Wasn't well if they did then And after they did they in just, my opinion Okay, I don't care if we were there five times. I don't care if we were there 50 times. I'm sorry. They were getting something for nothing for the last two years. And that's what I made my vote on. Okay, I just want that said. Okay, that's all. That's fine. All right. So, uh, Doug, with the minutes, uh, after uh, Councilwoman Franklin submits you something in writing, then the minutes would be over, uh, would be approved. You'll present them back. All right, thank you. <coughs> Could I have a motion to suspend from the record order of business? Second. All right, we have we. All right, we have a motion by Sepsi, seconded by Franklin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. As we have done for a number of years, when you address council, the mayor, the chief, or anyone, please state your name, your address. And again, I will start out on my left, your right. Anybody would like to address council? Yeah. Ross, the general brother Towers, uh, for Lisa and Chief. A uh, couple of things. I think the best approach as far as the parking lot situation, an idea might be, and, and Chief, you might want to pass this on to our chief, Getting the manager to agree that have tenants that have a vehicle inside in, in, in incentivize them because make it a, a lease violation or to register their they did they sent out flyers a couple months ago to register your vehicle if you have a vehicle you park it here fine but the best way that might work is if some kind of a monitoring system. I, I don't see how that, how that can be without <coughs> hiring someone. Volunteer status is what they had gotten a little bit of information. It, it's, it's not, it's not going to be sustainable. To, if they are able to line up a, a, a unit with a car, you still are landlocked, which we understand that, that, that that's a landlocked situation. I, I don't really see how other than when the restriction can be lifted to get some of us who are knuckleheads evicted for our bad activities. I don't I don't see how, how that could be sustained as far as a visitor visiting versus an assigned slot. That's what we're gonna to have to get to. Assigned I was going to say, why don't you meet with the committee and sit down and have this discussion with the committee because I don't think those questions could technically be answered right okay. now. Other question. Yes, sir. A couple of years ago, and you gave me this answer, I, when they were, East Pittsburgh were going through their, their troubles, my question led to the answer that you gave was, they have to be interested in disincorporating. Correct. Are they, or are, are getting sense that this is where they're at now, they want to disincorporate, and our tax base, as I suggested two years ago, could expand and we become a bigger enough product? At the, at, at, 
at the time, yes, they they were eliminating their police department. Oh, before we, they did that, I asked the question, and you said they would have to be interested in disincorporating. Then they got rid of the police department. Right. So now where are they? Do they want to disincorporate, or is our tax rates getting potentially bigger? Is this a hypothetical? No, I'm asking. Are, are they? Going to disincorporate, or they're waiting for regional listen, or are they running up the clock on still getting our services? No, they're not getting our services, and I think that they're just sitting back waiting for this regionalization to take place, and then they would, would be involved in that. They wouldn't have to worry about North Braddock taking over the Air Force Department. Okay, question. That bridge is coming down soon. Yes. Is there a plan in place for emergency services? Uh, the chauffeur here and the chief to be able to do what they already have been doing, irresponsible of, regardless of who's paying, who's not, and who we have uh, services with. Is there a plan in place to? <laughs> there is, uh, uh, they, they have their own. Go, go chief. There is a plan in place that we're even. We're going to have a car stationed up towards the third ward area. Third ward. First ward area. There, you know, we're going to have a car stationed up that way. Either that, or you can jump on right down and we say we don't have to use that. Way. Okay. Last question. Um, <laughs> if we have to. That's if we have to. It's not that we're. That is not necessary. May I, I ask you another, a council member, a question about the 59 bus? Is, is there any chance, or have you heard anything that uh, that double stop that they do within what 50 feet, it could be go changed from two stops to one? Did you understand my uh, type? I think that never be more important than the stops. They're always always revising what you're talking about, and, and they may add based upon what they're going through right now. I understand they're looking for they're looking for information from some public officials, et cetera, et cetera, to, to add. Like for instance, we used to have a bus that went through the middle, middle of town where it doesn't go anymore. For years, years that we had that. Well, and it's been gone. But there was a need, I think, and it was identified as a need for the rest. Not to take a stop or to take, remove a stop or add an additional one because it's 50 feet apart. I think that's what happened. Ross, you and I can talk. There's actually a study right now. There's groups that are working with how to sort of mirror a, a busway situation without a busway from East Pittsburgh all the way through. It's, it's happening right now. They figured it out, and we can talk about stops. And well, my specific thing with that one, Bus line at one stop. It stops at six and Portridge. Ross said it got to be the Portridge. It stops yeah. right there again. All I'm saying is drivers would like just to stop but after it makes the turn. That's all. That's all. Can talk. That is something for the Port Authority, not for North Braddock. We'll talk after outside here. Right. Anybody, anybody else to my left? How about the Senate? My name Mr. is Raymond Webb. Well, 1124 Patrick Avenue. Yes, sir. I want to know who do I need to talk to tomorrow to get resolution done with my situation. Uh, you come see the borough manager tomorrow. You went tomorrow, Doug? And then? Uh, the street department will be up at your house tomorrow. They'll stop up and take a look at your situation. Okay. They'll be up there tomorrow. 1124 Capacitor. 1124 Capacitor. And then about that vacant property program, you would have to come and get the application from Doug, fill it out, and then it will be presented to council. Are you going to be in tomorrow? I will get it to you. Uh, either I will have somebody drop it off at your house or my person will pick it up. Okay, thank you. Because the borough building technically is closed. Okay. okay. I stand corrected. Thank you. Now, anybody else to my right, your left? Edith, please. Uh, Edith Veda, 1527 Wolf Avenue. I have uh, two, two topics. One, uh, would you all be willing to open up public comment after you discuss the regionalization again? Because I think there, I mean, I certainly would like to hear the discussion on the regionalization. I don't have any context in which to offer any comment so that would be possible 
Well, I think, I, I, I don't know if you were here prior to or having a chit chat session, and I said, I think on its regionalization, it should be opened up to the public, and the public should have as much comment as, as the elected official, because it is your taxpayer's dollar. And this is what I would like to see public meetings with all the municipalities and their citizens, so with questions such as yours could be addressed. Okay, because I just was looking at number two, it looks like it's a motion. Yeah, yeah, before we take any more action, I think we, you know, those those type of meetings need to take place. Okay, so does that, does that mean that you're not gonna, there isn't gonna be a motion presented to approve or reject this? We're going to have to see what council uh, council does when that motion comes, uh, you know, okay. to be presented. Okay. So, is it is it possible for you guys to, if if anybody has public comment after that, to make comment? Because I know the I know the public comment is now, mm -hmm. but we haven't been able to hear any. And that's what I and, and that's what I'm not saying, bro. You not being able to hear anything that has been discussed. My suggestion was that we shouldn't take any action on this resolution. We have a public hearing in okay. North Braddock to discuss this. We should disseminate the study. Yeah. It's been done behind closed doors. We just got it uh, two weeks ago. Um, it's a major decision. It represents about $550,000 of tax dollars. Uh, and it's something that I think should be deliberated. It shouldn't just be done. It shouldn't be done on a vote of council. Okay, so, all right, I guess I... Guess I Okay, I agree. So, I'm, I'm still, I don't understand that number two, motion number two. You probably won't. I think we're probably going to pay, like, we'll pay number two. Yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, I'm, I guess we were, we were asked why the study group present that account. They yeah, have a very specific we, time frame. We were supposed to, we agreed last month that we were supposed to vote today with East Pittsburgh and also last week with Braddock and Rankin oh, okay. about this. And it was, you know, it was, they was trying try to get it done, a 90 day plan for October because the state was, the state was pulling out in October. So we were trying to make a decision so we can try to get some grant money from the state so they won't pull out. But okay, it's that so grant that would pay for the teacher's job. So no, the, the grant was, the grant was, the, uh, the grant was to repay the, it was a hundred thousand dollar grant to repay the, the boroughs how much they invest into that to thing. So our cost of getting into the to the um, to the merger would bring them down like maybe thirty, forty thousand dollars. So Okay, so you guys might take the uh, motion. I think we yeah, I mean the state the, I mean the state really um, they I think they're setting their date in October and for them to continue with us or not. So. And did they say that money would not be available they, if it took I, more time to it? I don't, I, I really, I can't answer that, but it seemed like to me, we talking on air, it seemed like it must stay out and that, that, you know, that grant, the $100,000 grant would not be there. Okay, so we have yeah, I mean, I think it'd be great if you guys could bring this to the public. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I agree 100%. So, so I guess I'm just trying to wonder, like, you may table this motion then, is that it? I mean, I know you're not, you have to vote, but I guess I was just saying that there is a vote prior to the vote, after you guys have discussion, can you open back up the public to make some comment? Because the way it stands now, we don't really have any, much information. Yeah, I, 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 I guess we can, providing all of the vote is here. If it's tabled, then there, there oh, will yeah, be no there will be no reason. For that's that. correct. Exactly. There's no reason. Okay. Oh, okay, so this, the other thing, sorry, that took a lot of time, but the other thing I just wanted to bring up was... And remember, if the motion is not even made, oh, it's seconded, okay. then, it, then, then it just, it dies right there. Okay. All right? Okay. All right. Um, so then the, the other thing I wanted to bring up, just again, I mean, I know I've been bringing this up since May, is uh, having some sort of uh, either audio or video chat platform. I'm sorry, last, I know last meeting I did say, um, talking to the school district, we couldn't use their computers because of the conference because of all the information on there. Okay. So I did talk to the superintendent, I talked to my brother who was on the school board, and they didn't think it was a good idea for us to use their laptops just for that reason. Okay. I talked to Doug, 
couple days ago. Um, hopefully, we can get something. I'm, we'll try our best for next month to try to get a Zoom going on. Yeah, just need a Zoom account. That's not. That's yeah, fine. so I would say, I mean, it, I, I mean, I'm happy to help, and I know there are probably other people here that are happy to help. Um, you know, Google, the Google Meet is free. Yeah. I mean, you just anybody have could join in, like they're joining in right now. We have a gentleman there with a camera, so I mean, if, he, if anybody wants to zoom in, they can. Yeah, well, we got we got to 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 we got I mean, that's something we got to work on. You know, we need to email off to everybody. Yeah. I mean, okay, just, well, if there's anything I can do to assist with that, just because, uh, you know, there was someone standing outside here. That person can't come in. And you can come in. Yeah. Oh, right. I understand. Okay. That, Anyways, it, it is a pandemic. So. Given the, um, the, ch uh, the challenge uphill on Governor Bush's edict. It's unconstitutional. Is the 25 minutes still required? Well, the governor did yeah, that, 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 that opinion upheld, that, um, struck down a complete ban, but, but the opinion didn't deal with restrictions. Right. Uh, that, that, that was, it was limited. Didn't the county go to 50 last week? That was restaurant. Yeah. 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 Restaurants. They went to 50%. But not at the gathering. Well, there's, a, there's an increase that's going to come back in on the 21st. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it'd be great. If, if there's something I can do to make that happen, just please uh, I will be happy. I will come with a computer and whatever we can do. All right, thank you, Edith. Anybody else to my right, your left? Nobody else? Sir, do you have any comments? Hold on, who's that? Somebody right here. Who? Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am, I didn't see you. Please state your name and your address. My name's Marcy Allen at 1726 Ridge in North Braddock. And I'm a crossing guard. And I want to know, are we keeping the crossing guards for this school term or not? Are we going to get paid? Can you speak up a little louder? I'm sorry. School crossing guards, yes. yes. Are, are, are we going Are we going to keep the school crossing guards? Continue paying them, even though you're not working. As of October the 5th, if all goes well, we will be back to work, if we're going to be back to work. I'm looking for direction from council. But we were up the first five weeks. When does that end, first five weeks? October the 5th. October 5th. And it, has it decided that they'll go back or not? All this. No, it's full so I guess it will depend on if they go back or not. What do, you, do you have any idea what the pleasure of the school district oh, is? Oh, please, sir, Bob, let them come back. <laughs> I, think, I think they have. I think the school I think the school, I think the school district has to be about a thousand. Yeah. Uh, so I'd like to look at that. I didn't hear what you said. Well, there, there, there's sort of two parts. One, whether, whether we would we would pay them, and the second whether we have to pay them. I'll, I can look at the second question, and I'll let, uh, I'll let Doug know, and, and if you get in touch with him, within, you know, by the end of the week, you'll have the answer. There are buses still running right now. Yeah. There's other people on the campus, but. Well, I think the special ed students are all back. I don't think they're campus, because Sarah's not. Why is it like I don't know. I don't know. I do are we I don't know. 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 Well, just like as our solicitor says, he's going to check into this and by the end of the week, give the borough manager a call and hopefully we'll have an answer. Um, okay, um, another thing, there's a couple of vacant buildings around my house that are rat traps as well, and um, I wanted to know if somebody... Could you give us the addresses and we'll see to it that they get made? Yeah, I've, I've complained before, same, same buildings. And we made them before? Yeah. 
Second by Sepsi. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion, motion by Franklin. Second by Breston. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Do we need an executive session? Uh, we have that interview tonight, Mayor. All right, then I need a motion to move to an executive session for a personnel, for a personnel matter. We got a motion by Sepsi, seconded by Dovernich, to move into an executive session for personnel matter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you for attending, everybody.